All right, all right, we're in. Let me go ahead and see if I can share this out. Share. How's everybody doing tonight? Share this on my timeline, and I'm going to tag you on there, Catherine. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and share it, too. Right. So, welcome those of you that just joined. Um, this is Mo Hustlers. So, uh, Mo Hustlers, we you know we uh, we usually go out and interview uh, any go getters out there or any all entrepreneurs. So tonight, our special guest is going to be a go getter tonight. So recently, she has accomplished something special. That I never heard of. <laughs> well, I, I heard of in high school, but you know, um, yeah, never heard of any mom person that has accomplished this uh, particular uh, thing. So, um, welcome, um, Catherine. Right? Yeah. Hey, Catherine, do, do you have like a mom name or anything like that? Yeah, I do. So my mom name is Ka, and Ka. so. Uh, yeah, if you're gonna take in like meaning into consideration, I'm Mong Ling, so it's like, um, so the meaning rather than bug in Mongkla is it means like happy and just to not cry. Ah, uh, okay, all right, I'm on there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so, so you're a bug to me, right? Is that what? Yeah, it is? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bug to everyone else, but I'm not. So. We got five viewers. You guys, if you guys see, uh, if you, if you guys see this, uh, if you guys can hit some likes or, or, uh, or so, or just comment below. Uh, it'd be great. So at least we say, okay, we can hear some somebody. Uh, some so people can hear. At least we know you guys are there <laughs> that can hear us. So, uh, we would appreciate that. I think I, Hong Kong, is that you? I hey, appreciate it, Hong Kong. So, so, uh. What was it? Was it this weekend that you accomplished? Yeah, it was uh, just yesterday. Can you let us know what you what you did? So um, or, I you know. essentially just through um, devoting just almost all of my time during all the weekends in these past three years that I've been in speech and debate has just allowed me to build my public speaking skills and just articulate myself. And really, that's what brought me to nationals. And so it was just um, building my skills over these years. Okay. So going to nationals, what is it? Is it is, I think we mentioned it was a national debate. Uh, yeah. So right? I am seeing it as just the hugest honor right now because it's um, one of the highest levels that I could ever reach for, really. And so it's um, I have actually I have the state competition, too, which I'm going to this month. And then I've been there before and I see it very just common because a lot of people can make state, but not a lot of people can make nationals. So I just, it's very prestigious and it's just uh, really cool, really. Okay, cool. And congrats, by the way. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, those of you guys just joined, if you like or share or give her a, how about a congrats in the chat? How about that? Because I I've never heard anybody you know reaching some sort of national, um, particular. Uh, what would you what would you even call it? Like a like an old, so, uh, huh? Um, I made it in debate, but I have a friend who's coming along with us who's made it in speech. So it's really just the national championship for okay. and debate. Yeah. Okay, national championship for debate. Right, there you go. All right. So the format of the show is going to be uh, we're going to ask a little bit about who she is. Um, 
what is she currently doing uh and how does she get in, how she got involved in this and then some tips on how to debate all right so uh let me see here anybody in issues hong kong oh, there we go so we got some people responding all right so so let's start out by uh just getting to know a little bit about you so ka right <laughs> so tell us a little bit about you where were you born i guess you know um i um, have been born and i've lived in fresno uh california my whole life and so this is the one town i know and live in and um unlike my siblings i've gone to one school district my entire life also so i've just gone to singer schools just my entire life and uh, i'm a junior in high school right now and i'm 16 i don't know there's not i'm not the most interesting yeah. person I think, but <laughs> i think like that's it's very basic information no worries, no worries. And that's it. I mean, I mean, we don't have to go that deep, and that's pretty good, you know, for a 16 year old, you know. So, uh, how, how did you get involved? You know, uh, I, I guess the, the second question is what are you currently doing? Right. So, right now, uh, since I'm a junior, I'm kind of worrying about SATs and uh. college. And, um, I've always prioritized speech and debate first anyways, so I put all that stuff behind me and I plan my SAT days around my debate tournaments. And so um, I'm just, right now, I'm currently working on a speech that I'm going to be using at our next speech tournament in May. Mm -hmm. It's actually small related, so I okay. can go ahead, but I can tell you guys a little preview about it. Um, I'm gonna talk about the secret war. Ah, the secret war. Raise awareness about it. Awesome. Okay, cool. And then, uh, how, how did you get involved in debating? Um, I believe it was my seventh grade year when I was still in middle school. We had a career day, and so I went there, and there was a speech and debate booth. And um, I don't even remember who it was, but someone told me like, go ahead and join speech and debate. It can be your English. It can be um, your English class too, so I don't have to waste my electives. And it just stuck onto me. I don't know why, but it was always in the back of my head. And then in eighth grade for our honors class, we were forced to be part of a debate. And during that class time, I was like, this is what I want to do. I want to do this in high school. I remember someone telling me I can, so I'm going to do it. And my freshman year, I walked into the class. There were like 14 people. And I was just wondering, why is there such a small amount? But I went to my first debate tournament and I loved it immediately. I was scared. I wanted to have a nervous breakdown every time I spoke, but I just loved the energy and the rush that I got from it. And so I just stayed. Oh, yeah. The rush. The rush. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. gotcha. And I know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, so. See, there's a thing here. Let me see here. Is it too loud? Maybe. You guys hear an echo? Anybody on the call hear an echo? Do you hear an echo, Catherine? Um, no, not really. Okay, maybe just me. Maybe I'm too close to the mic or too far. Um, so those of you who just joined, our special guest today is Catherine Moa out of Fresno. She uh, uh, just got, not, I can't even think of this, like, uh one or i guess you could say yeah. uh, is going to a national debate uh got accepted to a national debate uh competition um and and we're interviewing her for some tips on how to de do a debate so uh if you guys got any questions on how to do debate or any questions on how to debate against a person your wife your spouse <laughs> she might be able to <laughs> girlfriend <laughs> yeah. so so anyways so so let's let's jump into it right i mean just well we're not looking for anything deep right just some tips on how to do a, a debate yeah. and, and 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 earlier i i mentioned in the in the event uh that let's just say you and i were to debate against apples and oranges right because because mm -hmm. and then I'll, I'll choose the apple side because i like apples right yeah and maybe you choose oranges you know so what's give us some tips on how you, you know, what is your mindset? You know, what, what are you thinking 
uh, to prepare for this, uh, for this debate between you and I, and how do you, how would a person who, you know, in your position go at it with me? Since I, I'm, you know, I'm just a nobody. Yeah. All right. Uh, my first tip is to always have confidence in yourself and just walk in with the right mindset because, you know, like if you think that you're going to lose the entire time, then that's what you're going to do. You're going to lose. And uh, you being older than me, like that, that intimidates me a little bit because I know that, you know, I, I'm younger. I should probably not be a showy. I should just lower myself. But if I'm going to argue with you, if I'm going to debate with you, I need to go full at it. Okay. I need to you know, just think that we're at the same level and know that no matter what, I can win. Okay. And, uh, it's a really good mindset to have because uh, I have a debate partner. So I do a partner event and my debate partner and I, we've gone up against uh, Valley champions okay. from our league. Like they were the Valley champions. And um, my debate partner, he just looked over at me and he goes, those were the Valley champions from last year, but don't be scared. Wow. I mean, I was scared, but when I walked into the room, I just thought I have a chance to win and I can, and I will. And at the end of the day, I did win that round. So the right mindset can just lead you the right direction, really. Okay. So number one, right mindset. I guess that does make sense, right? So if like, if you're a player, like for any sort of, like, even in sports, you, you'll be like, you know, I'm in it to win it. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go in it to like, just say I'm playing or whatever. Um, so yeah, I mean, that makes sense. You want it to win. Um, okay. So number two, um, my number two tip is to, uh, really just use your own experiences in life because, uh, everyone lives like different lives. And especially because we're Hmong, it's, um, you know, we don't have a lot of light shown on us. And when you can use that against people, it's really just kind of, they don't know what to do. So I've done, yeah, I've done that in actual rounds before and my opponents, they won't, um, I can see how nervous they get when I talk about like the Hmong people and bring them up and I can see that they're looking over to their debate partner thinking, who is she talking about? Like, what is this? Or even just something close and personal to you. It's really hard for someone to attack your personal things because it makes them seem like a jerk. Mm -hmm. It just makes them terrible. So mm -hmm have personal examples and you know that it'll work go ahead and use it use whatever you have because that's what's going to help you win gotcha so so let's say we're arguing right or arguing or debating <laughs> we're debating and i go all right i'm i'm going at this i want to win this debate apples are good oh apples are the best right so man personal experience man i think you I think you kind of won on that one because I'm thinking, <clears throat> I'm thinking, I can't think of any reason why I would get drink or even eat an apple just out of pleasure, right? But if you were to be like, you know, uh, okay, so this is my, my thought, right? So if we were to compare that, I would. I think oranges will win because I would be, if I'm like sick, I mean, most of the time when I'm, when I'm sick, I go and drinking orange juice, right? Yeah. Or um, I can't think of any reason. Uh, the only reason I would drink an apple, uh, <laughs> the only thing I would eat apple is out of pleasure, in which I hardly do that. And other than that, I would just drink apple juice if it's just around or maybe even for breakfast. But otherwise, we think you're saying, I'm just trying to visualize how we would debate this as just user personal experience. You know, I think I would use go at an orange. <laughs> yeah, uh, think, so if you would use so so you would use that against me. I think you had already won that round, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, even it goes like a lot further than that. Like, so I have um, two orange trees in my backyard, and I even have like a lemon tree. So, if on this account, it's just more common for people to have a citrus tree rather than an apple tree in their own backyard. Yeah. yeah it's not very common for people to own apple juice. Oh, you got me. <laughs> <have apple. laughs> 
And <laughs> even right. that, I think like apple juice is almost like childish, almost. <laughs> it's like something that you want to give to your little, you know, it's like what little kids want to drink. They want to have apple juice. They never really ask for orange juice because oh, man. They, don't like, they just don't like it. I just lost. I lost that round. <laughs> You're right, because I do have an orange tree in the back, you know, <laughs> at one of my properties. I don't have an apple tree. <laughs> yeah. So so there you go. Round round one. I mean, okay, we start out even. Round two, I give this round to you, right? <laughs> so, yeah. So, so um um what was it? Personal use personal experience, right? So yeah. what was tip number two, right? Use personal. and that's it okay so next one um i would say uh if you because this will help with personal experiences too just backing it up seeing how it affects everyone and not just you because then you come out of the i'm being selfish bubble and i'm looking for the greater good for everyone and so you know continuing with the whole apples and oranges thing um Citrus is typically more used common in baking, and I just know that because I bake. Oh. So, <laughs> I, what I can think of, like apples aren't used very common, and if you want to, like, and even apple then, apple pie. There we go, apple pie. Come on. Pie, but with citrus, you can use the whole fruit in baking. Oh. It's not very common that people like the skin. Sometimes they'll have to peel it off, yeah. and then it just becomes compost. But with oranges, you can use the skin as the zest. Oh man. I think I can give this round to you again. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else want to help me out here? Everybody, uh, we got 10 viewers here. Come on, any Apple lovers? Come on, did you guys help me out here? Right, Kao, uh, Shua, Fong, uh, help me out here, man. I'm losing the, I'm losing this bait. So, <laughs> get 10 viewers, help me out here. <laughs> All right, so uh, your, your third, let me see here, let me hide this. Your third tip for, what was it for the, I think I saw you mentioned, what was it for the greater good or something? Yeah, just uh, look on like, yeah, see what is, what works for the greater good. All right. Orange sucks. That's what Shaw says. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks, buddy. <laughs> and apples are crunchy. Yes, I love that. Okay, thanks. Apples are are crunchy. Thanks. <laughs> I don't think I don't think I'm winning on this round. <laughs> so, um, any other tips um, on top of this? Um, let me. Uh. I guess you could say if you can just like turn the tables on your opponent and use their own logic, them. especially if you're arguing with someone like your spouse, yeah. better than make them crumble apart. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what's that? And what's, what's that? that? Um, because like, like if you use what she was just said, you know, he goes, um, oranges suck. And yeah. so I can say, well, that's just an opinion. So on the proven fact, I'm like, how, like when I said oranges are used in, in baking for like, or just citrus in general is used a lot more in baking. So if oranges suck, then apples also suck because okay. it's an opinion. And I can say that. And um, uh, him also saying like apples are crunchy. I can just say like, well, the textures of the two fruit are just too different to compare. Okay. So okay. oranges are really, you know, they're more of like a mushy fruit almost. And then um, apples do have like that crunch. Okay. Uh, if we use like the apples and oranges one, it won't really work. We're trying to, which his thing, the logic, it's like if we went to more just like arguing with your, maybe like your girlfriend on where she wants to eat or something, or just like something really common like that, you can really just use their logic against them. Okay, let's go with that. So... Use their logic. So give me a nice scenario if you can think of one. Um, 
and I'll let you I'll let you think about it, and then let me answer some of this, some of these questions here. Uh, Roly Poly says, "What's the debate?" And the debate is oranges, which is better, oranges or apples? And we're trying to just come up with tips on how to debate. And she's come up with with uh, is it three tips already? Yeah, we're at three, I think. Three. One one is the first one is uh, to go in it. I think with the with the winning attitude. Two is to um, oh man, what was two? I gotta start writing these down. Uh, two was to use your personal experience, personal experience. Like what you've seen in life. Yep. And then three was to see what's best for the greater good. Uh huh. Um, I mean, oh, uh, if we since I can't really see one for like logic, if you guys, you know, for another tip, like a good one is if you can try and memorize like a few fancy words okay. <laughs> like long large words that are not very common okay. so when we talked about how what's best for the greatest for um what's good for like the greater amount of people uh -huh. there's actually a philosoph uh, philosophy term for that and it's called utilitarianism okay and the definition of that is doing the good for the greatest amount of people okay yeah, so basically that's what our tip number two was. So if you can just remember, like, if you can just remember a bunch of big fancy words and just start throwing them out, it'll make you seem really smart sometimes. And I've seen my opponents do that. I've seen them just throw out a bunch of big words and then you lose track. Because yeah, because I'm like, what does that mean? You, you, yeah. I don't mean, I, I couldn't remember what you said. What was it? You, you, you. you <laughs> You and I finished college, by the way. <laughs> like, if you have so many big words thrown at you, they just get mushed together. Yeah. And so if you just know, like, just one at least that's random and, and you know the meaning of it vaguely, then go ahead and use it at some point because okay. it throws people off. Yeah, because I'm, like, focusing. I'm, like, all right, what is she talking about? I'm, like, I'm trying to, like, piece it out. Like, what is that? I didn't mean to spell that word. <laughs> so I, I guess that is going to throw me off there. I mean, so, I know it's the U, and that <laughs> I, I suck at spelling genuinely, so I just don't know. Gotcha, gotcha. So, uh, those of you guys just joined, we got Catherine Moore <clears throat> that just uh, that came in on the show. Uh, we're pretty much almost done here. Um, uh, if you guys have any questions on how to debate, uh, go ahead and post your comments or questions below. Uh, she basically is going on a national competition on debating. Um, and that's all I have for now. So so the next question is, who, who is your, you have any mentors? Um, so I do, I have our uh, two debate coaches and um, well, they're not two, I have one for debate and one for speech. Mm -hmm. And so uh, if they see this, Norris will feel bad. But I look towards um, our debate coach more, Mr. Socks. I'm a lot closer to Mr. Socks, and um, he's kind Mr. of an all around right? guy. Yeah, like like uh, pair of socks. Yeah, like socks. Wow. S T O C K S. Not okay. socks, but socks. Like okay. stock market. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Uh, I look towards him more because uh, he's. It might be because he was the one who taught me my freshman year, so I do have a bias. But um, usually, when I need to work on a speech, I will go to Miss. I will go to Socks uh, for debate. I will go to Socks. Anything really, I'll go to him. And uh, when he was in high school, he also did speech and debate, and he also did theater. So he knows how to work with both sides of the world, which is why I like to go to him. Gotcha. And, um, he does the same things that I do, but he's just more able to articulate himself well and just present himself in a manner that I can't. And it just makes him look so much better. Oh, well. Yeah. He's got, he's got he a few. Too. <laughs> uh, he tells us, too. He okay. tell us, he'll be like, this is like this is exactly what you guys say. I just presented it di it differently. So you just have to learn how to present. Oh, okay. So it's more how do you present? Is it is it like, I don't know, is it the way he's dressed in a way? Um, it's more just the way you speak. 
Okay. So, yeah. Is uh, he like, is he loud in a way? He's, I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it unless you've like heard him speak. He just sounds smart. Like you just okay. listen to him and he just sounds like he knows exactly what he's saying. He sounds like he knows everything and what he's doing is right. So I was thinking like, could it be the way that you're dressed also that can intimidate in you or maybe, or the way how you, if you talk loud, would that be a way to intimidate other people in a debate or, or maybe you whisper, like you whisper, right? like you uh, have some information, you know? Dress wise, I've never really seen a problem because for our tournaments, we're expected to look professional. So um, I've never like had a problem with dress, but um, how loud you are, I definitely have had multiple problems with. And I have had opponents that will ramble nonsense, but are talking very, very loud. And so whenever, you know, I try to go up there, I have, I don't, I don't try and speak as loud as they do. And I'm a little, and the judge is already used to that louder voice. And so there's me over here who's just a little bit more quiet. And so the judge is kind of almost starting to doze off then because he was used to a different volume. And that loudness does intimidate me a little bit because I'm not used to that. You know, I'm not used to hearing someone almost screaming at me. Gotcha. You know, someone who's like not my parents screaming at me. I'm not used right. to that. So I guess that would be a good tip, right? Being mm -hmm. loud. Yeah. <laughs> Being loud. Being loud definitely intimidates people. Because I think of like, it's kind of like the, what is that phrase? You know, the, the, the more, if you have a bunch of kids, a bunch of babies laying around, the, the one that crowd that cries the loudest is the one that gets the most attention, right? So that's how I, I view things. So if you talk louder, maybe you might win that debate because most of the attention would be towards you. Yeah. Um, so, all right. Uh, Roly Poly says confidence what do you think about yeah we, i think we talked about confidence earlier right yeah. yeah um we can just go over that really quickly i think confidence is a big thing really because um my uh freshman year and like halfway through my sophomore year of high school i would always put myself down i would always just think like i could have done better you know um like i i just didn't think that i was really good but I had other people telling me like, oh no, you know, you're really good. And later on in your life, you're only going to get better. And so um, halfway through my sophomore year, I decided to drop it because my coach had been telling to, me to Mr. Stocks, he had been telling me like, you need to drop that act because that's what is probably why you're losing most of your rounds is because of my lack of confidence. And um, my junior year this year, I try, you know, I, basically just rose my confidence levels. And now I'm here making it to the national debate tournament. So confidence is definitely a big thing. Cool. So so I have this one more question. Yeah. Because when, when we talk about like debates, you know, the, the person I, I think of like is a good debater is, is, is and people know me, my friends know me, I'm a big Trump friend. <laughs> did you, did you listen? Did you, were you, did you listen to the, the debate for the last presidential debate? Um, yeah, we actually did. Uh, because Mr. Stocks believes in like, you know, since we're debaters, we should also watch debates. He had us all just had like a potluck style night where we watched um, Trump and Clinton debate. Yeah, and so we had watched that, and it was, it was a fun night. So, so what did he, what did he think about? The uh, I think I I generally don't really like to look towards politicians for, for a debate example because they do like just in general. It doesn't even matter whether it's like Trump or just senator. Like they they move around questions basically. Uh -huh. right. But um, seeing as though a lot of like some of the best debaters have been presidents. We have a debate form named after presidential debates. So um, the Lincoln and Douglas debates, uh -huh. like, all way back then, we have a debate form in our league named after that. So it's called Lincoln-Douglas debate. Uh -huh. So I think um, 
if you want to look towards uh, political candidates and their debates, go ahead, because that's a great way to start. Okay. Well, I was just saying how how Trump kind of does kind of what we kind of talk about. He's pretty confident when he comes into his debates. Yeah. Um, he does intimidate his opponents. He does. He does. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, like, uh, honestly, I, I'm not the biggest Trump fan, but, like, there are some things that Trump has done that I'm, like, I, I'm very in the middle about him. Yeah. Uh-huh. I don't exactly hate him. I don't exactly like him. But yeah. in all honesty, he does do a lot of the things that I just said. Yeah. He, you know, he has that confidence level. And even when he messes up on things, he goes with it. Yeah. You know, like it, it, he has the confidence. He he does muses. Um, he tries to bring up, you know, like how he does, since he is a president too, he does yeah. bring up how this is going to affect America in general, the benefits of the things that he wants to do. Um, I never really, I've never really like exactly seen his speeches, but I'm not sure if he does use like personal examples, but that's also something for you to choose on. And he does intimidate people, you know, and since he is a political candidate, they all try and intimidate each other. So it, the best part is what do you think about making fun of people? Does that work in a debate? Making fun of people? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I, have, I, have friends, I, do. <laughs> I have friends that I don't even know if he's going to watch this. And I'm going to go ahead and call them out. Um, well, no, I won't. But yeah. I have friends that if you get them riled up the right way, then they just go at you and they yell at you. And then maybe if this will go around. Um, but then his debate partner once. So it's a guy and a girl, right? So once the guy gets riled up, the girl breaks down and she doesn't know what she's doing. Right. And so once they, they get to that level, um, the other team just wins at that point. So if you know how to push someone's buttons uh, just to the right tipping point, they fall apart. Whatever they say just doesn't make sense anymore because they're mad. And so then you can be over here telling, um, you know, whoever's watching you, just the judge or just like the unaudience, just tell them like, wait, what you just said doesn't make sense. That supports me. And just go at it and say, this is why I win. Because one, they supported me at some point and their points don't make sense at all at this point. So, awesome. yeah. Awesome. <laughs> okay, great. So I'm going to use that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead and push up people's buttons. I've had people try and do that. Everywhere. <laughs> uh, I've had people try and do that to my friends. Uh, mm-hmm. People are always trying to push your buttons because they know once you get mad, you just you just fall apart and everything just goes down south for you. Gotcha. All right, uh, that's all I got. Um, we like 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 I said, we keep the show short, less than an hour. Uh, we're about thirty minutes, thirty five minutes into the show. Uh, well, thanks you guys for joining. Uh, those of you guys just joined. Um, Hey, me, me, show. I don't know if you know her, but she says, she says, hi, go, Captain. Congrats. I believe uh, she's relatives, actually. Yeah, uh, I have a Christmas, I have a Christmas card from her. So, um, <laughs> hi. Uh, I'm not, I'm not the best person with memory. I don't have like the best memory, but hi. Thank you for, you know, uh, just if my family is watching, like, really, just thank you guys for all your support. Um, I, I set up my GoFundMe page last night and I've already gotten so much support from all my family them sharing my pages and just supporting me it just making me really happy awesome so so uh, she did mention she has a go fund page <clears throat> uh, she's you're gonna be using these funds to to go to your national competition yes uh, I think you mentioned in Florida right mm-hmm. yes uh, uh, Fort Lauderdale Florida okay so she's gonna need some help uh, some funds for hotel, lodging, food, and everything yeah. to get her. So, uh, from if you want to know exactly where your money's going, uh, so for our tournaments, there's a registration fee, and so I have to register to compete, and there's a fee for that. Um, the school is going to pay for my flight, I believe, and then um, and my hotel, and. Honest, this money thing is so complicated, but I also do need money for my own personal expenses, like meals. Um, and also, I mean, I'm in Florida for a whole week and I'm not just debating. So sometimes our coach will just take us around Florida, show us some, show us around. And so um, 
I need like money for that too. If we were to go to like the movies or just any kind of like tourist attract attractions. So your money is going, if you end up do do donating, um, I'm going to say thank you right now from the bottom of my heart, because it's just, uh, I'm so happy that people that I don't even know in my family are supporting me doing this. Mm -hmm. And um, it just means a lot to me that I have this much support. Yes. And, you know, uh, let us know if you do win. Um, yeah. I would help you out. I do live in Florida, but I'm in Orlando and Florida Lotto is pretty far. Uh, <laughs> yeah. About, it is about almost two hours. So, <laughs> so it, it wouldn't help you at all. <laughs> so uh, thanks again, Catherine, for coming on the show. Give us a few little tips. Uh, <clears throat> we might ask you to come back again. Maybe give us some advanced tips down the road uh yeah. we uh we i guess we um and we, we hope you win <laughs> i can come yeah, up with the I, words <laughs> um i hope i get far at least really um i mean i always go in with the mindset like saying like i've made it this far it doesn't matter if i win or not but really in the back of my head i'm telling myself like you better win <laughs> yeah so let's go in it like you said, go in to win, all right? Yeah. Going to win. <laughs> all right. So, anything else? How do people get a hold of you? Um, I mean, you can find me on Facebook. So I know, like, I was tagged onto the video for this. Um, you just message me there, and so I'll just go ahead, and you can just like go ahead and talk from there. But okay, cool. So, guys, we have. Uh, follow her through facebook uh we got her uh go fund page uh in the link I'll, I'll put it in the link again you guys help her out we would appreciate that um and that's it so that completes show number two of moan hustlers all right thanks Catherine, for uh joining us and uh good luck to you um thank you for having me on the show i i honestly never expected like this kind of publicity you could say from just making it to nationals i um, so thank you for having me. No worries. Good luck to you. <laughs> um, we'll you. keep in touch. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks everybody who joined. Um, and you guys, everybody have a good night. All right. Bye guys. Good night to everyone. Mm -hmm.